Are you ready for this introduction? You need to stay stone faced, please. In the beginning of time, everything was compressed into something smaller than a tic tac. Which is quite impressive because we all know a tic tac is the smallest thing we can observe. And then it all exploded in the biggest orgasm you have ever seen. <laughs> Although that's probably not much of a challenge for our listeners. Wait. <laughs> Am I allowed to crack my straight yeah. face yet? I was told to keep a straight face. We can I mostly that. managed it. Yes. And then about nine billion years later, the earth propped in. I thought you were going to say then about nine o'clock. <laughs> But then you had to wait about 2 billion years later for natural history to begin. And then another 2 billion, roughly, for humans to begin. Are we going to say hello? And then much later for, um, well, not much later. I was to say hello. Uh, shut up. <coughs> Many millennia later for civilization to begin. And that is a brief summary of history. Some would argue we're still waiting for civilization to begin. Uh, inter- uh, n- no. Um, <laughs> right, yeah, so hello, I'm Fireball. And I'm the Orbiter. Yeah, about 10,000 years later, whatever. We exist, and now we're talking bollocks about it. 10,000? Before I forget, I'd like whatever. to apologise to all the feminists out there. It's only history, because that's the English language for you. It could just as easily be herstory or themstory, but oh, it's, it's just... <laughs> I I thought you were talking about... um. Like the use of mankind, and also any um, sexist things in history aren't our fault. Yeah. <laughs> because history can be quite sexist. Anyway, uh, first wanted to talk a little bit about some things happening in the world right now. Uh, actually, before I talk about that, someone asked, someone commented, one of our loyal subscribers, hopefully you subscribed, uh, as for merch, whether seriously or not, I don't know. Mm. Uh, at the moment, as is it 23 subscribers we have? On YouTube, yeah. At the time of recording. 34 on Twitch. Yeah, uh, merch isn't a very feasible possibility. <laughs> oh, well, it doesn't cost us anything to... to... What? market you can there's well, places that you can to... that you can just upload a design and people order you give them the link and people order and you just get commission for it you'd have to find somewhere willing to make them yeah there's companies online that do it yeah but you have to have a big enough demand i think for it to be no you they're quite it. expensive to order from but that's yeah. up to people who want the merch you know if they want a break in bollocks t-shirt <laughs> they can have a break in bollocks t-shirt it might cost them 20 quid but at the moment, I think the demand is like free people. Though, yeah, which is I'll get, us too. I'll get onto it at content. some point though when I've got a free. Yeah, maybe down the road, a or two. even when we get more popular, we will make merch. I want merch. We've got a shop section on our website that we can't. There's no point using at the moment. We could actually use that. Well, I doubt most companies would be willing to make stuff though. They don't have to unless they get an order. They just you upload a design and they print a t shirt if somebody ordered it. Fine. <laughs> anyway. And also wanted to talk about Syria. Uh Oh, before you do, can I just say hello from history? Because by the time you yeah. see this we will be part of history. Yeah. Sorry anyway, on. um Syria, yeah, that's been going on for a while, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, specifically the airstrikes that happened. By the time this goes out, it'll probably be like a month ago or something. Uh, this was on uh, what were suspected storage facilities for chemical weapons. Apparently, I read, I don't know if it was today or yesterday that I read, um, that the UN inspectors, chemical inspectors, had been allowed access. Russia announced that they had finally been allowed access to take samples and they've been sent away for testing. Right. So Which might... seems to have been a little bit of a delay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I why. Um, <laughs> it does seem likely that those places were storing chemical weapons. Mm. And when it comes to Syria, there's it's a very messy conflict. There's no clear solution, and there's 
probably not a perfect solution. I'd just like to mention the awesome Oscar-winning documentary on Netflix. If anybody gets a chance to see it, have a look. It's called White Helmets, and it's not a rude documentary. It's about a team of people who... <laughs> who um, That didn't cross my mind, but okay. Yeah. It's about a team of people who basically go into the rubble of, of um, the the bombed areas in Syria and rescue people. Um, and they, they go to Turkey to train. And yeah. It's a very dangerous job, but it's a very moving documentary. Check it out. If Because diplomatic approaches have been tried. We've tried to hash stuff out. But then whenever anyone says that, I say we've tried to bomb them. Neither have really had much effect so far. My biggest problem with any any reporting from any media source, government source, or anything is that you we've no idea who's telling the truth and um, what the situation on the ground is even like. Mm. But I suppose that's the same of any news, isn't it? You're you're always you've always got to look at the source and yeah, bear that in mind. I would like to pull up an article here. Basically, the situation at the moment is. Uh, a while back, I think six years ago, maybe seven now, possibly even eight, uh, a rebel group started after some protests got stopped violently by the government. And that civil, the civil war now has been going on for that many years, whatever. And eventually the West and Russia kind of wanted to intervene in that because it was creating a fair few terror cells. Specifically, ISIS was largely attributed to that. And their presence in Syria is quite worrying to many of the world's powers. So they've been attacking various places in Syria. Now, the Western powers have been trying to keep it mostly to IS, more recently attacking government facilities in the case of chemical weapons. Uh, but Russia has been attacking rebels. And I initially thought, why is this? What do they stand to gain there? And I found an article on it from the BBC. BBC Basi- Newsbeat. Yeah. Uh Basically, uh, Russia is looking to flex their guns, literally, (laughs) in the case of war. Yeah, they're basically looking to make a show in the Middle East and also sell weapons to the Syrian government. Well, suppose Putin, I mean, this kind of ties into the history thing. He's uh, very much an old USSR era kind of politician, isn't he? He... he harks back to a time when the USSR was a, a global power. Um, and he's, yeah, in that this sense, is an opportunity for him. He benefits very well from oligarchs. But this is an opportunity for him to um, try to reinstate that kind of power, especially yeah. with America being probably um, on the wane to a certain extent. With the Middle East, it's a lot closer to Russia than most people initially realise So it's in their interest to keep it stable, if you will. And stable means that keeping the same people in government, pretty much. Mm. And also it opens up opportunities to conquer places like Georgia near them, which are very much in that sphere of influence. I would imagine the um, Baltic states are quite worried at the moment. Yeah, but they're nowhere near that. No, but it's, um, you know, I mean... Yeah, with the Crimea stuff that's happened, and is U- Ukraine's still not sort of reacquired, is it? Oh <laughs> uh, well, the rest of Ukraine, as far as I Although, can tell, it's intact. Of course, Crimea is part of Ukraine, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's like, isn't it a divided thing. population a little bit there that some of the population regard themselves as Russian and some don't? I would not know. Mm, I think so. Anyway, I just wanted to quickly talk about that and say that my opinion on it is I would rather that it was taken in a diplomatic way because that's the best way to avoid a humanitarian crisis on our hands. Well, they've already got a humanitarian crisis on their hands, haven't they? Yeah. And I would appreciate if the UK government would like to 
stop tyrannical governments that use chemical weapons that they stop selling arms to the fucking Saudis. Yeah, that would be... Uh... Who <laughs> arguably started the biggest humanitarian crisis in history in Yemen. Yeah. Not history. Um, in modern history. Yes. So, anyway, history. Yeah, in general, history. And um, shall we take a structured approach to this? Where are we going to begin? You, you said the beginning of go, time. <laughs> go all the way back. Uh, okay, so let's first assume that the Earth is more than six thousand years old. Yes, so that's all the evidence supports. Creationists, it. tune out now. Um, yeah, if you or if you, want if to learn you didn't tune saying, out after seeing my T-shirt, then yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. Yeah. So all evidence supports that, whatever. Uh, what, yeah, where, where do you want to start at the start of civilization, or do you want to go into natural history? Well, there's lo been lots of starts of civilization, hasn't there? I suppose the oldest well, yeah. one we know about is like the Mesopotamians. There's and been several collapses, as far as I'm aware, because a, um, a lot of the governments, the early governments of like Bronze Age civilizations were ridiculously centralized, so when important people die, it all falls apart. And that's how collapses happened yeah. back then. Mm. I suppose the situation now is far more global, isn't it? So, I mean, you can yeah. you can get individual countries maybe collapsing, but there'll always be other countries, civilized nations, if you like. That'll quite worrying how going. easily though hum humanity could just be wiped out. One big sunspot, <laughs> or that super volcano. I'm yeah, watching. a meteor, <laughs> a big enough one at least. Yeah, or you know, nuclear apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, as if as if there aren't enough things that could happen that we don't bring it about ourselves. <laughs> or the poles melting and us all drowning. You keep bringing the poles into this. <laughs> as it loaded, loaded, locked and loaded. I feel, I feel like a bit of a relaxed conversation tonight. I feel like we've been getting a bit... I mean, obviously, talk about history, but let's yeah. let's yeah. let's not be too serious. We're all mellow up in this shit. <laughs> um, right. So... Uh, yeah, let, let's begin with... Let, I don't know where to begin. History is quite a broad topic. Ancient Greece and ancient Rome. How about that? Right, so you look in. The Greeks it, were first, weren't they? Generally, yes. Yeah. Mesopotamia, that's that's all over Syria, way, isn't it? So they were. Uh, yeah, Mesopotamia, I believe, did cover Syria. I'll quickly Google mm. it just in case. I think it mostly covers Monday Iraq, possibly well, Iran. There was. Um, okay, it was. Was it Jordan that there was um, worries a couple of years ago because. Um, ISIS, was it ISIS or what was the other group before ISIS? Um, oh, uh, what's his face? Uh, uh, Al Qaeda. Yeah, I don't, I can't remember which group it was, but there was there were sort of flattening historic sites, weren't they? And there was a really valuable historic site over there that it was, you know, we couldn't really get into to protect, and I can't remember the name of the place. Yeah, so that so it kind of be... went down through. Is that Iraq? Yeah, a bit of Turkey too. And oh, is that Turkey? So is this Syria? That's here? Syria here. Yeah, right, that's, that's Turkey. Iraq here, Iraq, I yeah. think. Yeah, that's Iran there. So that's Iraq. Yeah, you can't see this, but so it covered Wikipedia, Mesopotamia. Yeah. Uh, if you want the image thing, it's Tigris Euphrates um, river system, which is, I think, where it was. I think it's a shame that there's all this stuff going on because there's so many places over over in that kind of area that I would love to visit that you just can't access yeah. safely. It's the same with Egypt. I've been as to well. I've been to Israel, um, and, and even then, which was in the mid '80s, I, it was I, um, with the whole Israel situation quite risky, and with the whole Middle East situation, the instability there, it's easy to point blame at loads of different people. Uh, you could blame the Crusades originally. You could blame um, the French. You can always blame the French. Yeah, well, <laughs> when they uh, it kind of invaded Egypt, 
Napoleon, that sort of time. You could blame the British Empire for drawing a load of shitty borders. <laughs> just straight line here. <laughs> Let's face it, just about anywhere in the world there's any problems, the British Empire has been. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, w- I just want to quickly bring up a map of where Britain hasn't invaded. <laughs> where... And I'll bring up the opportunity to highly recommend a, uh, a satirical history of Britain that we've been watching recently by Charlie Brooker called Kunk on Britain. On It should be on BBC iPlayer, should it? Yeah. Yeah. Hilarious. Map of the day. And occasionally informative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we've got Bolivia, Paraguay, Guatemala. This is There's where not a lot have... there, is there? No. Humanosphere.org. Uh, we haven't... Right, yeah, so we haven't made of Guatemala. I imagine that's because the Spanish got there. Map of the Bolivia day. and Paraguay again. Where Spanish. the Brits never invaded. And there's a fair few places in Africa that I didn't expect. We've got a few places to collect the full set then. <laughs> uh, we haven't made Mongolia, but that's because it's quite closed off. Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, but they were pretty much a absorbed into Russia. We haven't invaded Sweden, but that's because we've always been quite good allies with Sweden. Yeah, but beer's really expensive there. During the Napoleonic Wars, we were allies with Sweden, and that's why. And a lot of the new places, like really small places like Liechtenstein, Vatican, Andorra, we never invaded because they weren't really... Vatican? Can you imagine if we invaded Vatican? Yeah, the... <laughs> to give you an idea of how small Vatican is, it isn't just contained within Italy, it's contained within entirely within Rome. It's a city as well as a country, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it's a city contained within Rome. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it that <laughs> there's a lot that you can blame on the British Empire, but quite rightly so. Mm-hmm. We haven't invaded Chad. Republic of the Congo. We've invent we've invaded um Democratic Republic. Of One the Congo, of the uh, things I was Lier, as it used to be called. wanting to consider in this conversation was what? how um accurately do you think you can trust what we learn as history. I mean, obviously, it, it does vary from country to country what you learn, um, but always history is written by the victors. Yeah. I think if you um, look below what you're taught in history class and look at the dirty details, then it's... And it depends what time period you're looking at as well. Heavily. It's never quite but as clear-cut as it's... If you're looking at stuff before AD, you've always got a bit of uncertainty, especially with the dates where things happened, because a lot of stuff wasn't properly recorded, because mm. people didn't see much point in it. But uh, with more modern stuff, you can fairly easily rely on records. I think. <laughs> But again, it's all there. They are the the important part is the story part of the word is that it is people writing about it, and it is the survivors that write about it. But also, you can um, tell because you, if, if you look at actual, like you can find the bad stuff about the stories. So, if it's someone that the victor wouldn't want to present that part, would they? No, that's true. like the British Empire being doing lots of shitty stuff everywhere. Mm. If if they wanted to, I think it's becoming this grandiose image. They wouldn't put that. There. I think it's becoming more and more difficult for um, any regime to hide the truth completely because there's always going to be information is so widely, yeah, disseminated like nowadays. If, um, I would say that the probably the most close to information these days is probably North Korea. Mm. But, if, but even then, you see you see reporters that yeah. do manage to at uh, great risk get information it, out. They usually get given like a very limited tour and are told to turn off the cameras, or re- mm. they'll be arrested in certain places at least. But you do get defectors that manage to escape by the skin of their teeth, usually, and. They can feed information. This is going to be. I think I feel, I'm feeling this is going to be quite erratic. Budget. Yeah. Um, how? Um, and see, when I think of history, my the history that I learned at school because I didn't do it up to uh, sort of O level GCSE, um, but the the level that we did it at was all about basically 
I mean, earlier on you did the older British stuff and and the ancient stuff, but yeah. m- the main part I did at school was about from sort of 1066 up to possibly about 1900, the latest. Right. So it was all the kind of you know the the monarchs and stuff like that. So I was going to ask, I don't how, think- how long do you think the monarchy can last? The monarchy, um, the British monarchy. I, I did see some, I, I'm not going to bring up an article, but um, recently uh, the Commonwealth, because uh, there was a bit of uncertainty about whether if the Queen naffs off, uh, the other Commonwealth countries would accept, is it Charles or Philip? I always think Charles. It. Charles mm. as their actual monarch. <laughs> Just, well, I saw a thing about him today. Head, whatever. It was in a news article. I can't remember where it was. I'll find it. But uh, he basically done another gaffe. You know, he's always putting his foot in his mouth. And there was a, a woman um, that he was speaking to from, uh, it was either Uruguay or Paraguay. And, um, and he asked her where she was from. And she said from Manchester. And he said, oh, you don't look like you're from Manchester. <laughs> and she was like. Uh, yeah. Well, she wasn't from Paraguay or Uruguay. I think some of her, you know, distant relations had been in the past. But you don't right. look like you're from Manchester. <laughs> yeah, uh, the royals are quite uniquely out of touch. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't see... I, uh, it would be difficult not the to monarchy, be, I think, in the world that they probably have to inhabit. The monarchy these days is nothing but a glorified tourist attraction to me. Yeah, I, I have mixed feelings on it because I don't agree with the the principle of a monarchy um, but I don't actually think they fulfil that role so yeah. it's kind of, you know, I, I do like a good show <laughs> and, um, but I don't like it when it's turned into something nasty like sort of patriotic kind of superior, yeah. superiority and all that sort of thing it's, um, but you know, there's <laughs> I I have mixed feelings because I, I I have seen the Queen. Wait, know, hang on. I went to. You said patriotic. Oh. Yeah, you were grilling me for that in our democracy video. You piece of shite. <laughs> <laughs> Not one to bear grudges. That's a part of history now. Let's leave it there. Oh oh, oh yeah. Well, we're talking all about history here. <laughs> Let's talk about your search history. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's not Google it. We, no, no one wants to be there. <laughs> I feel like I'm being bullied. Rightly so. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go back to ancient shit. I I always find quite an interesting fascination with um the classical era. Uh, yeah, I like ancient Greece and all their gods and their kind of like whenever you go to the Middle Ages, I always just lose interest. But then they were quite. They were quite high on things like philosophy and, and yeah. art and culture and, and the sometimes st- literally stuff that seems high to be on the weed. Threat. Socrates was actually quite a supporter a of weed. Yeah, because they always smoked that sort of stuff in ancient days. Well, you do have some pretty deep philosophical discussions <laughs> when you're stoned. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how coherent they'll be if you recorded them, though. <laughs> Let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not just now. No. Anyway, history, yeah. We'll save that for our drugs discussion when that one comes up. Spoilers. Sorry. Going back to the whole Middle East thing, they're easy to point blame, you know, and uh, you could point blame at the fact that we put Israel there or whatever, especially with the Israel-Palestine. Uh, do, do you know much about that? With um, Israel-Palestine conflict, it's all to do with territory. It's to do with the West Bank and who. I know that whose it is, and the reason for it was um to sort of give a home to displaced Jews, which I see as a a good thing for that purpose. But at the same time, it's taking land from someone else, mm. and. It's caused a hell of a lot of problems. And also, Israel have been dicks to the Palestinians. Like, If you look at some of the stuff that they've done, it's really... Well, Israel didn't nasty. used to exist, did it? Well, a long well, time ago. It 
depend. Yeah, on yeah <laughs> on who, who Israel works. didn't used to exist. The universe didn't used to exist. Oh, ha, ha. But also, um, Israel did exist in like ancient times. So. Did it? Okay. Well, it's um, like reference loads in the Bible, isn't it? Um, the Israelites are, but they were slaves in Egypt. Um, oh, they okay. the Holy Land was their kind of um, promised land, if you like. They believed. Well, in they, that they sense, escaped, it exists. They escaped historically. If the if the Bible um, has this in its favor as being accurate historically the idea was that the israelites were slaves of the egyptians and they managed to escape or a, a great number of them managed to escape led by moses from egypt um, half of that's probably bollocks possibly but the uh, the idea was that they, they suffered and and they were they were looking for a land flowing with milk and honey which basically they were looking for their promised land their paradise when they yeah. when they left egypt um and i think that is when they sort of found what is now thought of as the Holy Land or Israel, um, and they believed that it was uh, it was what they were promised by by God, by Jehovah, um, right. and I think the Palestinians are a bit kind of well. Actually, no, we live here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it it's a very that's also a very complex situation, mm. and also I don't like how Palestine's territory is split. Like, they've got the West Bank and Gaza, but they're, like, miles away from each other. Mm-hmm. But that's that's not a good way to have territory, in my mind. But, no, but there's you always probably get this, a very good reason for what You always seem is. to get this disconnect, and I think you can see it in sort of Northern Ireland and in any place where there's in a you know conflict, probably in Syria as well, that at some point everybody forgets what the initial um, disagreement was about, and it becomes um, tit for tat, basically. Yeah. Um, and it's easy for that to 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 happen to spiral out of control, and it's very difficult to get back from because as soon as you've got people who've seen their families killed by whoever's on the op- opposing side, you've got a ready-made enemy who's going to be very reluctant to forgive and forget. Yeah. You know, I think it was in um, possibly Hitchhikers or either just some weird concoction of my imagination. It's sometimes hard to tell. But a war that lasted like millennia, so long that both sides forgot even what it was about. Do you remember? Does this ring any bells? No, but there's something. Is that was there something to do with? Uh, was it? I seem to remember something about some cricket stumps. The the buildings shaped like cricket stumps, the wicket thing or something. I don't know. I I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, we're meant to be talking about history. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Where do you stand generally on? Do you think the British Empire was a good thing or a bad thing? Both. In what way? Um, I'm sure there were many brilliant advances brought about by the uh, the advantages that the British Empire had as a result of the power that it had, right. but at the same time. It had that power because it was an oppressive invader in most of the world and it advocated slavery, which is clearly wrong. Um, Do you think that we'd view the Nazis the same way today if they won the Second World War? Yeah, that's a What's that series on Amazon? I want to watch that. Is it The Man in the High Castle? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to watch that um, about... If modern day, if Nazi Germany had won. won, yeah, it would be interesting, yeah, for the actors in general, yeah, because I mean, there's an assumption that if Nazi Germany had won, that we would be in some kind of extremist global society now, but chances are it could quite easily have just settled down. <laughs> you know, politics doesn't stay the same for yeah. very long. Um, it is remarkable how just big history is uh, i recommend a video by i'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it i think it's kurz gesagt gesagt possibly german or dutch but uh, they make loads of good videos with really high quality animation and one of them is on history and time in general and looking how just insignificant 
your life will be in the course of that. Mm. Like um, the fact that a T-Rex is closer to today than a Stegosaurus. It is scary. Yeah. We, we, we literally, in, in the scale of the time that the universe has been around, we are literally a microscopic sliver of like and that's our so life much, is a really tiny that, that it's that, so I much of human history was statistic. spent in the stone age as well when you look at when you look at um I, I love things like this when you look at how unlikely it is that you should be alive assuming that you uh, were guaranteed to have existed at all which is incredibly unlikely anyway well unless but you look the chances if you look statistically at the chances of it being during your lifetime right now it's yeah. infinitesimally small, you know. Look around, look around. How lucky we are to be alive right now. I like that, yeah. Ha- Hamilton. Let's talk Hamilton. Yeah. you. I think you know a bit more about the history of... Um, was it the American Civil War? Not the Civil War. The Founding Fathers... No. Well, yeah, but the, the American Revolutionary War. Teach me, because we're going to see... Where they were like, point. fuck off, Britain, and then, like, 200 years later, they're like, oh, yeah, we love your royalty. <laughs> <laughs> kind of ironic, really, isn't it? Yeah. Like, if, if we wanted America to do anything, we could just hold the Queen hostage. <laughs> they would do anything for them. See if that happens now. You, you do yeah. realise they're going to be knocking on our door. <laughs> <laughs> The CIA just turn up. Hey, we might get a few subscribers, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, just some <laughs> bored person at the Pentagon. No, no, no. I mean, if you got arrested for taking the Queen hostage. I'm not taking the Queen hostage. It would make history, though, if you did. Yeah. Let's take a... <laughs> <laughs> And we'd get loads of followers. Would it not be yeah. worth it? Yeah, they might not be the good kind of followers. <laughs> Just get a bunch of revolutionaries. Guaranteed free um, advertising exposure. I, I don't think many people want to advertise on that. No, no, no. You just get the front page of every newspaper. Oh, free yeah. Free advertising. That's like how Donald Trump... Well, I would like to see how they would uh, how they would name the channel, though, because it would be interesting to see which papers would actually call us Breaking Bollocks. Well, that's not the channel, is it? No, nah, but, you know, the series is Breaking Bollocks. Yeah. Breaking bollocks, take Queen hostage. <laughs> yeah, let's just title it. Let's just title this video that and see if anyone clicks on it because of it. No, because they'll probably think we've gone and dug up Freddie Mercury's corpse and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just take and found hostage. John Deacon in his reclusive. Uh, yeah, we're just forcing them to existence. What? We we've dug up Freddie Mercury's corpse, found John Deacon in his reclusive, wherever he is. And kidnapped Brian Managed, May and Rod Taylor. Yeah, but if you wanted to kidnap Brian May, what the, how what would you do about his hair? You could, there must be he must have some he must have some kind of specialist. Yeah, um, why are we talking transport. about kidnapping the band Queen? <laughs> why not? Okay, history was the starting point. Let's just let's just wander. I mean, I said, didn't I, in the last episode that I, I wonder if at any point in the future we'll manage an entire episode where we stay on topic. Yeah, it's not going to happen, is it? It's not. Maybe we shouldn't just should just shouldn't try. What do you yeah. think? What do you think the fans want? Uh, let's let's try stay vaguely on topic. Does that sound like a good idea? We could play good cop bad cop. No, per episode, no. one of us tries to go no. on, on topic. Oh, let's, through. let's just <laughs> let's just stop. I'm not being annoying. Yes. I need more coffee. We're only half an episode. Should we take a break? And Not a break, but just No, we're a... not taking a break. I don't want to take a break. I just want to refill my coffee cup. No. Oh, but I need caffeine. No. No. <laughs> you're not bribing me with your farts. Bribing? That's, that's blackmail. But you're not blackmailing me with or your brown mail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining you <laughs> shitting in an envelope and sending it to someone. Else. Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Brown mail come to not that idea. Who? Brown mail. Oh. <laughs> okay. So history. Anyway, you keep wobbling the table. Oh, that, that may have <laughs> fucked up the camera. If the camera wobbles a lot, it's because 
He's inept. I think we're we're okay. I yeah. The monitor. Anyway, um, history. How do we get yeah. back onto history? Yeah. Um, I, I I would like to talk about the impact religion has on civilization as oh. a whole. We hit, we have talked about religion before, but it's quite important within the context of history. I'm to a certain extent. I'm a little bit torn, but I I, I don't know. I think it. I think it may well be a necessary part of a civilization's evolution up to a point. But I think it um, simply because if you look, if you look a long way back, back to it's very difficult to envisage. But if you can think of like cavemen and you know tribes that that were very very early on in development, proto civilization. Their existence their view of the universe around them is obviously very alien to us but imagine seeing a solar eclipse for the first time a total eclipse yeah having no knowledge of what it is or you know literally i mean this this ball of fire in the sky i mean it was it must have been a magical existence to them literally like you know it was yeah. everything was amazing. although to be honest i would imagine since that just always existed for them until you start actually inquiring about the fact that it is a ball of fire, not just a random light in the sky. Yeah, it's and weird. It's really difficult to actually think. Yeah, like in those. Terms. I think they would be more concerned with survival rather than being mystified about the the world. But there would have been a lot more that was outside their realm of knowledge. I, I mean, yeah, there um, was a certain point, especially when civilizations like the Aztecs came along and started actually worshipping these things that you could call that the start of science as it is the start of inquiry and whilst they were who there who invented wrong, God? who invented God? Um, I, I don't think we have a name stroke of genius well not a stroke of genius for them it was I mean because yeah. it's, it's a way to wield power isn't it if you claim to Probably wasn't any the... specific person. It was probably a combination of people. Mm. Maybe one person was like, hi, I was like, could you imagine if all of this was made by a dude? Religion's a very uh, wide topic as well. I mean, you could you could yep. just point to the, the, the uh, Red Indians kind of view on I nature as being a religion. we did talk about this in our religion episode. Yeah. Um I think we'll as try well, not when you look at when you that. look at how many different civilizations have had some form of religion that had no contact with each other previously, I think it's easy to postulate that it's a necessary part of the evolution of a civilization. Mm. But um, I think it maybe out outstays its welcome, like a an annoying family member that came for Christmas and is still there in June. Is that an experience you've had? No. <laughs> Just quickly clearing it up. <laughs> I'm sure some of you have, but Yeah. Anyway. Um Oh, I'll quickly uh this I am inspired by the mighty Hello Internet. Uh a book called Guns, Germ and Steel, they talked about this. The book is its own thing. But uh this book main argument is that if you look at all the factors around the civilization uh, well not necessarily we could predict but th there is a way to determine how successful they would be which initially to me seems like a very obvious thing and it's when you go into the details that it gets more interesting but also uh, when you look at how people disagree with it, they're usually looking at the fine details, like the fact that there was a bunch of different conflicts with tribes when the Spanish arrived, or different battles going a different way. That would have meant that the Spanish Empire would be bigger than the British Empire or whatever. Does that make yeah. any sense to you? Um, the Spanish, yeah, the Sp it is weird, isn't it? The Spanish Empire. I mean, I can see it, and not in my well, yeah, in my lifetime, the decline of a of a superpower. Yeah, it's, and and China is on it the is, is big on think, the rise. Um, 
with, Spain was with it less than 40 massive. years ago Spain was a dictatorship uh, yeah I'm, I don't know what I'm it is now that. It's. A, I think it's democratic now I think it's still quite authoritarian I'm for Italian democracy, maybe yeah. a little bit corrupt for them. Well, it must we be it must be a democracy because it's in the EU, isn't it? Not everything in the EU has to be. Democracy. Is that is that not one of the requirements of membership? Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, when did Spain become a democracy? Well, it's become a democracy apparently. When Franco finally died, nineteen seventy five. Yes, yeah, so you were alive when Spain was a dictatorship. I was four. First four years of my life. Although it's fair to say I didn't actually know anything about it mm. at that time. Mm. And it didn't take long for the. I don't suppose it would have been necessarily a particularly um, popular British holiday destination. No. Before <laughs> that point. No. And. Um, so that's happened quickly. One of the things is because. Um, if you're aware of history, you're probably fairly knowledgeable about the fact that when the Europeans went over to the Americas, not only did they kill all the, well, not all of them, but most of the indigenous people, they also gave them a bunch of diseases. But That's the nice of them. pertinent question is, why didn't the Europeans get diseases? And a large amount of the reason for that is that diseases thrive in cities. And the indigenous people didn't have very big cities. Mm. So diseases wouldn't spread. And the, and also looking at how different animals being in different places really affects civilization. Like sure. the fact that the horses were in Mesopotamia is the main reason why they existed. <laughs> mm. And but, um, going back to the thing about civilizations rising and falling, uh, well, yeah, you know, regimes rising and falling quite quickly, and, and in, looking at how quickly Spain changed, how quickly China's on the rise, how yeah. how quickly Russia fell and then is rising again, seeing America on the wane. It I think seems it's to me that. The, the whole situation will seem like massively different in a hundred years or so. Quite possibly. Um, it, it, somewhere in the world, things will be massively different. Yeah. But it seems to me that the British um, constitution or, or political situation, in comparison, feels quite stagnant. Um, Britain doesn't... Uh, what do you mean constitution? Well, do you mean the actual I mean, document? Just, just no, no, no. I, just, I mean the just the way things are in Britain. It hasn't really changed a huge amount. There's been gradual change, but it's well, the British Empire has been on the decline for some time now. Yeah, but it's it's been a very slow process, you know. I and mean, there's still all the Commonwealth. You know. Yeah. Well, you could also argue that its place within Europe, especially within recent years has changed drastically mm. although on the grand scale of things it doesn't seem that different because we're not conquering it all are we it's difficult for me having lived through a fair bit of that to see things um objectively because obviously now knowing that um what we see and hear from the news and certainly a lot more back in the 70s is fed from specific kind of media outlets and you know we're everything i've heard about up until the more recent years of the internet has been through the eyes of a brit you know yeah. so it's easy to see i mean i think brit britain sees itself as a lot bigger a player on the world stage or has done historically than it is for a long time because it was massive once well and I think because some people still think it is, but I would kind of like to think of the Commonwealth as, a, and this sounds very cool, a sort of shadow empire. It because mm. we still have much influence on the Commonwealth nations. Like Australia is not mm. going to suddenly go fuck off Britain. I They're suppose, still very attached to us. But I suppose it's still quite a, an impressive thing for for a country as small as us to be. Yeah. Is it the fifth? 
richest well a lot of the economy reason for that is th- that we're surrounded by a sea it was quite difficult to invade us. yeah yeah i think that's always been our biggest asset hasn't it yeah and also the fact that scots are fucking terrifying <laughs> <laughs> and or just useless to conquer Depends how That's an interesting thing I was going to bring up about history as well. I wonder how much um, Braveheart. Braveheart is fucking bullshit. I know, but that's my point. Um, how much do supposed based on true stories, Hollywood films about historical events influence the way things are seen? Um, obviously, historians who actually study the, the past wouldn't believe any of the bullshit that comes out of Hollywood, but the the majority of the public, do they see the Hollywood version as being the accurate representation of history? Um, I, I wouldn't really know, because when it comes to history, I'm quite knowledgeable. Yeah. yeah, and I'm generally interested in the world, so I'm not... I It sounds kind of condescending to say, like, oh, the entire population is below me, but... Um, <laughs> I just said that, but um, yeah, well, I I would say that I'm more interested in those sorts of things than most people, so it's kind of hard to say from my perspective. But I know that when it comes to things like history and politics, you tend to know less. And I'm not saying mm. that you're idiot. You're an idiot for that. No, I think there's a common but, misconception that the because uh, there's that that kind of linguistic thing about if you're super intelligent, they call it being in the top two percent or whatever. Um, and it's not about top and bottom. It's just it's just a it's just a fact. You got to recognise what your intellectual power is. And I I would say that even power. You know, it's like it's not about power. It's just intellect doesn't come with just memorising the most facts or having the most knowledge. I would say that it comes with the thirst for that knowledge and the ability to absorb it. Plus, it's also not um, not always a uh, a good thing, you know. There is, there, or it's not always beneficial. It doesn't make things easier. It doesn't give you a uh, yeah. The, the silver spoon doesn't. Well, the silver spoon's more about money, isn't it? There's but, an argument you know to I mean? be made it's, that there's blissful ignorance. Yeah, <laughs> the intelligence can make you feel like quite depressed because you're aware just how shit reality is. Sometimes, and you, and you have absolutely no fucking idea how to stay on topic. Yeah. <laughs> and we're talking about like existential crisis and shit, <laughs> and my depression. What? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> anyway, oh for fuck's sake, you're not helping. <laughs> <laughs> history. <laughs> what else is there in history? We are travelling through history. We are making history all the time. That's um, I got Reddit today. You got it. I've made an account on Reddit today. Who did you? Yeah. I c- can't post stuff for some re- weird reason, but um, I don't know. I can... Is it on your phone or your laptop? My laptop. You should be able to. Yeah. It just says request to post not valid or whatever. I'll have a look at that because it's a good supposed, supposed to be a good place for getting... Um... Yeah. And I saw... Um, a uh, post that was a quote from Owen Jones. Do you know who Owen Jones is? I've heard the name. I uh, is is he? Believe he may be a reporter, but I believe he's most of mostly a left wing activist. Is he Quite, on LBC at all? Uh, possibly. Uh, I think he is probably quite famous for leading a bunch of protests outside Parliament towards the Conservatives against. Against yeah, the yeah. conservatives. Mm. And um yeah, so I find him quite interesting and agree with a lot of the things he's saying. And he was saying about uh the recent treatment of the Windrush generation thing. Yeah. Which I think is fucking shady as hell and they should really fucking sort that shit out. Whoever shredded those documents is a cunt. I don't know a huge amount about that. Give me a quick uh basically it. I mean, the facts will vary because there's not really anything official. Official, but is it, uh, this is my interpretation of it. For all I heard was that there's there's been there's a lot of people around who can't prove that they're British or something. Uh, basically, after the war, 
uh, Britain wanted to rebuild itself. So it allowed all the Commonwealth nations to just have entry into the UK. Mm. These people still had to have a landing card, I believe, but they were given this pretty much for free. Mm. Now, later that became outdated and I think I think it was the Home Office in the Cameron uh, administration, whatever, that shredded a bunch of those landing cards to so those people that came or their parents that came because they can't have their parents' landing cards, can't prove that they came to the UK legally, despite the fact that a number of them have been living here their entire life. Yeah. And their parents came here legally. So they're technically and potentially so they're classed as illegal Im- immigrants. Then. Yeah. <laughs> they're threatened to be deported. I don't know if things cleared up yet whatsoever. And there was this guy that's been... Um, I saw a thing because they basically made a pamphlet. This was on Have I Got News For You, I think. The government basically made a pamphlet for all the people that were going to be deported. And one of them uh, said, try to be Jamaican. Use local accents and dialect. What? When was this? Like, in the past few weeks. They made a pamphlet saying try to be Jamaican. Yeah, for people that have been living in like the Midlands for their whole life. And only what the fuck. And only knowledge of Jamaica came from what See, this we is... would know, or what their parents taught them about Jamaica. But this is one of the things. My immediate response to that is: this is one of the reasons I just want out of the UK because it, it, I'm it, sometimes things like that come up, and I just think seriously, Britain, fucking hell. Yeah, they're you a know? bunch of cunts sometimes. Uh, but onto the actual idea of how we'll be looked back on in history. Uh, th- what this thing was saying, the way that this is being handled is shameful. The people that are doing this will be looked upon like that by historians. Yeah. And how just our lives will be judged by historians is quite an interesting thing. I mean, yeah. obviously we'll be dead, so we won't particularly... Care, How we but, voted back in an administration that deliberately shredded people's um, identification papers so that they could be deported. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Rule Britannia. Mm, perhaps not. Mm. I, I don't get the whole sort of patriotism of uh, any country, to be honest. When I look at, like, Borders and shit, and just like Everyone, those are actually imaginary. Yeah, everyone's got their like. This is just pluses and negatives. This is just pieces of rock and grass. Yeah, this is you don't like, have to have this sort of shitty. I like Jim Morrison's take on shit. it. He's like an American poet. Um, you know, uh, can't remember which song it is, but he he does a lot of kind of monologues during songs, and one of them is to do with what have they done to our. Um, what have they done to the earth? Tied her with fences and dragged her down, mm. and all that sort of stuff. It's like it's not. I mean, it's weird, isn't it? Because I mean, if you look at it on a much smaller scale, you wouldn't want people just coming into our house and helping themselves to whatever. Because it's no, but our house isn't a country. No, but right. um, there there has to be some kind of territorial kind of concept. I guess, but. It, it it just doesn't gel in my head. No. Like, let's all be friends. <laughs> I, I like multiculturalism, uh, multiculturalism because I just like the idea of loads of people coming together and making something brilliant. And I don't get how people, especially in somewhere like America where most of the population is very closely related to immigrants. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's ridiculous how you can have so much zeal against people from other places. Is zeal the right word to use? Xenophobia. Yeah. I, I it's always it. it's there's always people on both sides though, isn't there? I mean, we, we'd be as bad if we tarred all Americans with the same brush. So, you know. yeah. To be honest, the UK is not much better. And I don't want to go tarring Americans with a brush because we're going to be visiting there. Yeah, we won't we won't be barred entry for making a podcast. No. But And um 
I find it funny how the UK is having a go at, well, not, yeah, I would say having a go at migrants for wanting to flee a situation that the UK largely created. Would you say I was an immigrant? I mean, obviously I'm still in the UK, but there are people, there are sort of Scottish nationalists that might see me as a I, I don't really see Scotland as that separate. No. It, I don't think there's really any immigration protocol there, so no. No. But there are um, plenty of times, I know when I enrolled for college... Um, you know, uh, yeah, there is a sort of difference in that sense. When, you, when you're asked for your nationality, quite often there is a separate um, option for Scottish and British. I would class myself as British because it's what it says on my passport. Yeah. I, I don't feel much pride for Scotland. That may be because both you and mum are English and I, I have an English accent too because of that, that I just don't feel much connection to it I, other than... It's weird actually having lived here for the, this amount of time yeah. and seeing England from the outside. If I, had, if I, oh, if I was yeah. forced to choose... Now, I would probably prefer to identify as Scottish than English simply because I just despair at the, you know, attitude of... But that's about nationalism. You know, it's not about... Yeah. I most people aren't like that. It's just I don't that, agree with any sort of nationalist ideas. No, why do you have to identify? It's like just a um, yeah. human being. <laughs> End of. History. <laughs> yes, so... Uh, did, did it's we... interesting the way that, that, that our topics sort of wander and interesting to look at what they wander into. When you talk, when we were talking about history, we've, we've gone into religion and politics and, and... The Middle East. Empires and... How will be viewed. I mean, actually, history is a much wider topic. You've got, like, the progress of the human race. You've got revolutions, industrial revolutions, technological revolutions. You've got you've got great figures from history that have been very, you know, creative or or, or great research been done. You know, that if you look at where we are now, but some I'm people would see it. But I'm afraid that's all we have time for. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> oh, wait. I have been powerful. Are we? Uh, do you want to talk about anything else just quickly? Because we... no, I can't be asked. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I, I think I think they've probably had enough anyway. Yeah, we've been breaking bollocks. Breaking bollocks. And that's where we get our name from. <laughs> yeah, I've been fireball. I've been the orbiter, and this has been breaking bollocks episode nine or eight. Nine. Help me. I think it's nine. Nine. Have you German? Thanks for watching. We'd really appreciate if you support us on various things, obviously subscribing on YouTube, Twitch, following us on Twitter or Facebook. We have a Discord server that you can join and talk to us and other people, and a website where you can check out blog posts. And obviously this isn't free for us to run, so if you'd like to support us financially, we have a Patreon page where you can donate monthly and get subscriber rewards. We also have a Stream Elements tipping page where you can make one-off donations. The links are all in the description. Farewell. See you next time. Oh, and just quickly, we'll probably talk more about Syria next week. I won't tell you what the subject is, but the you week probably guess. The week after next. The week after next, whatever. Oh, is it what I think it is? Mm-hmm. What is it good for? You've ruined it now. I can cut that out if you want. No. <laughs> this this can be after the thingy, because then people won't actually watch it, so it won't matter. <laughs> Maybe. See, if you don't watch if you don't watch through the call to action, then you're missing out. Yeah. We're doing a marvel on them. Yeah. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, could watch that tonight. Right, let's get going. What? Breaking we, Bad. Oh, if, I thought you were talking about, yeah, we could watch a bitch tonight. Mm -hmm. Night, night. That, that sounds creepy. And also, if they're <laughs> American, um, then that's not accurate. Cause it's it depends what time, what time they watch it. Yeah, well, it could be afternoon. Okay. 
Afternoon, afternoon, morning, morning. <laughs> Can we stop? No. Uh, bye. Let it end. Yeah, bye. That was random. <laughs> In the beginning of time, there was it. No. Hang on, I need to think of what I'm going to say first. Yeah, that would help. <laughs>